Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, we're going to learn today a little bit more about uh, making beats. And in particular, what we're going to do um, is I'm going to show you how you can actually tell Pro Tools, hey, please play this beat exactly. Not getting a loop, not getting a beat that somebody else designed, but getting a beat that I designed and getting Pro Tools to play it exactly the way I want. Okay? So let's open a blank session here real quick. <coughs> um, and while we're talking about this, um, it's important to recognize that when we learn this process, we're learning a lot more than how to use Pro Tools. What we're really learning is about beats and about how drummers think and how drummers play. So uh, to program a drum part, we have to become a drummer for that time period. Uh, <coughs> so I'm going to open up a session here, and I'll just, uh, I'm going to call it backbeat.blake. And... Um, as with any kind of musical thing that I want to happen in Pro Tools, um, I need an instrument track in order to tell Pro Tools, hey, I want you to play these notes on this instrument. So creating an instrument track, I do the same thing that I do for any other instrument track, and that's Command-Shift-N to bring up the new tracks window. I'm going to make a stereo instrument track, okay? So there it is. Um, now, the thing is, you have to think of this instrument track as a little bit like a music stand. You can put sheet music onto that music stand, but until there's a musician and an instrument sitting in front of it, there's nothing that you're going to hear. There's no sound. So there'll be no sound even if we put notes onto this track because there's no instrument yet to play those notes. So how do we put an instrument on an instrument track? We have to make sure that these inserts right here are shown in our edit window. If they're not, uh, we come to the little thing that the little sign that controls what we display on the tracks, the edit window view selector. Okay, and if I click on that, I can see that inserts A through E is checked. If it's not checked, we're not going to see it. So I'll just click on here, click inserts A through E, and these are the slots that I can put instruments and effects onto. So I'm going to click on one of those inserts. I'm going to get a multi-channel instrument, and the one that I'm going to pick, the one that's the most useful to us is something called Expand 2. I select it, and this big scary looking thing pops up that's really not big and scary, actually. It just looks that way. <coughs> this is called a software sampler. It can basically become any kind of instrument we need, from drums to guitar to uh, strings to piano to anything else we want, okay? Um, so the preset section up here is going to be where we tell this sampler what instrument we want it to become. So I click on it, and I have this whole list here of stuff. I want to go to drums, and it gives me a list, and all of these are different kinds of drum sets. So I'm going to pick this one called uh, Urban Beat. Um, so it puts some different instruments into these slots here, some kicks, which is the <coughs> low drum, snares, hi-hats, toms, claps, cowbell, tambourine, okay? Now, what's happening is all of those have been assigned to notes on the keyboard. So if you have a keyboard hooked up to Pro Tools, you can actually play this stuff. So if you know a little bit about drumming, if you can kind of like, you know, keep a beat and sort of play a little bit of drums, you might be able to actually record just what you play. But a lot of us don't know how to do that. So we're going to learn to do something a little bit um, that doesn't require so much musicianship from us. We're going to learn how to program Pro Tools to do what we want. All right. Now, in order to do that, we're going to open up something called the MIDI Editor window. There's two ways to do that. We can go here to Window, and we can select MIDI Editor. And as with all windows in Pro Tools, we also have a keyboard shortcut, Control Equals. Because I know I'm going to be doing this a lot, I'm just going to use the shortcut. I'm going to hold down Control and hit the Equals button, <coughs> and I get this window that shows up. Okay. Now, on the left-hand side here, we can see there's a keyboard. And if we scroll down until we see the numbers 2 and 1 on my keyboard, see how we have a 2 and a 1? My drums are in between there. We have a kick. We have a snare. We have a hi-hat. We have toms. Uh, there's some cymbals somewhere up here. So each one of these notes is a different drum now, okay? Uh, <coughs> so how do we get Pro Tools to actually play these notes? 
by double clicking on any grid space next to the drum that I want to play. For example, if I want the kick drum to play on the first beat of the song, I'm going to go to the first beat, and if I look up here in my bars and beats ruler, I see that's one, one, that means first bar, first beat. I can just <laughs> double click right there, and I get a kick, okay? Um, <clears throat> all right, now it's time to talk a little bit about how to get a drum beat. Pretty much every single drum beat that you listen to in every kind of music that you like, whether it's hip hop, whether it's rock, whether it's R&B, no matter what it is, is probably a backbeat, okay? What's a backbeat? A backbeat is something that has a kick on the one and a snare on the two and the four. So if I wanna start making a backbeat, here's my snare, uh, which is on the key D on the keyboard. I want one to be on the two and the four. So I look up here, let's see, first bar, first beat, first bar, second beat. So I want a snare on the second beat. Right? Okay, now I also want a snare on the fourth beat. There's the third beat, there's the fourth beat. Okay? Incidentally, you might notice that there's 16 little grid spaces in this whole bar. Four, 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 and four. That means that each one of these is a 16th note. That's the way we want this grid to look. If it doesn't, we want to come up here to my grid selector and you can tell it how big or how small you want this grid to be. If I wanted to do eighth notes, for example, I could do that, and you can see that the number of grid spaces in the bar cut in half to just eight. But 16th notes is usually what you want to do this kind of work. So I'm gonna click there. All right, um, now <coughs> this is the, uh, um, the, the last thing usually that we wanna make sure that we have as a bare minimum for a backbeat is a hi-hat. And the hi-hat is usually gonna play on every other 16th note. Now, it could be every 16th note, but every other is a good place to start. Here's my hi-hat, uh, here's my, uh, my hi-hat, right? My closed hi-hat is on this first of the three black notes. So I'm gonna double click on every other one. Okay, now let's listen to what this sounds like, just like this. Now, honestly, this is gonna be a pretty minimalist, boring sounding beat, but it's gonna be a beat and you're gonna recognize it as such. Okay, so let's go back here. I've got a little region that has appeared on my instrument track now because I entered some notes. If you zoom in, you can see that those are the notes that I entered in the MIDI editor window. Let's listen to it. Okay, like I said, kind of boring, right? But it's there, that might be a good beat for something. What if I wanna make it a little more complicated, a little bit more like what you would hear in the tune? Um, <clears throat> what can we do? Well, the first thing usually that I do is I add some extra kicks besides just a kick on the one. Like for example, you might do that, okay? Now, what that's gonna sound like is boom, psh, ba boom, boom, psh. Let's give a listen. Whoops, we'll edit that out of the real show. Here we go. Uh, get jiggy. Okay, anyway, that's th the kind of thing that we can do. What else can we do? Uh, one thing I really like to do is to make at least one of the hi-hats open instead of closed. Now, what do I mean by that? That's the closed hi-hat. When the hi-hat symbols are together and somebody's hitting with a stick, if it's allowed to be open and ring, it sounds like that, Psss, right? So maybe I'll move one of those to open, okay? Now it's gonna sound like this. Cool. Another thing I really like to do is to put a snare on the very last 16th note of the song, of the beat. Um, so here's my snare. Here's the last 16th note. Whoops. Okay. What does that sound like? Okay. So you get the idea. All right. That's the basics of how to make a beat. Now, once we've got that, I can see here that I have a one bar loop, right? I can do the same things to this region that we have learned to do with all of our audio. I can duplicate it. Um, I can take any one of them and I can trim it back by however much I want or trim it out. Um, I can take a part of it and I can delete it. It's just like any other audio, right? 
Um, and I can get this now if I've locked up my loops to Pro Tools tempo, then those loops from whatever song I picked and the beat that I made are going to go together. All right. Now, why am I showing you this when we're talking about making mashups? Because a lot of times when we have different samples from different songs, things sound a little disjointed. They sound a little like, whoa, this thing is from over there and this thing is from over there. And I need something to kind of glue it all together. And that's where this kind of beat comes in. I can have that beat going throughout my stuff and it kind of unifies all those different sounds. Okay? Hope that helped. Have fun making a mashup.